G'day guys, Max here from Evidence Based Football Manager. Today we're going to have a look at the infamous marking system in Football Manager and try to find out whether the system is working as intended. In Football Manager, marking is very confusing because there are so many different ways to ask your players to engage in a marking duty. For example, in the tactics screen here, uh, you can ask your players to either mark a specific player from the opposing team or mark a specific position on the field. In addition to this, uh, there is a button here called Mark Tighter, which supposedly tells your player to mark the opponent player a little bit tighter than usual. Also, if you go into this uh, tactics screen here, there is a button here called uh, Use Tighter Marking, which again supposedly tells your entire team to mark their opponents a bit tighter than usual. So straight away, there are some questions that arise by looking at these buttons. So what happens if you turn on this um, Use Tighter Marking function here without actually telling your players who to mark? Um, or uh, what happens if you turn on uh, this uh, Mark Tighter button here uh, from the player instruction screen without actually uh, assigning the opposition player to be marked? What happens if you turn on both Tighter Marking button here and the Use Tighter Marking button here at the same time? Like what happens then? So these are all uh, questions about the marking system in Football Manager that are not explained very well in the game. On top of that, uh, during a match in Football Manager, if you go into the uh, opposition instructions page, you can choose a player from the opposition team uh, and ask your team to tight mark that player. Again, the system is not explained very well in the game, so uh, here it doesn't tell you who is actually doing the marking. For example, if I want to turn on um, tight marking for Ruben Diaz uh, from the opposition team, am I telling all of my players to tight mark Ruben Diaz or is the uh, the job uh, given to whoever is closest to uh, Ruben Diaz on the, pit, on, the uh, on the field? It's all very confusing and I will try to find uh, get to the bottom of this marking system as much as I can uh, in this video. So as always, I'm going to use a controlled match environment in order to test the marking system in Football Manager. I'm using the Community Shield match between Leicester City and Man City at the start of the preseason in England. Uh, this match is held at a neutral venue at Wembley Stadium, so there is no home ground advantage to either side. I've added a second manager in the game, so I'm in charge of both teams, uh, Leicester City and Man City. So let's proceed to the match and first of all, uh, let's test out this part here, uh, mark specific player. So I'm going to instruct the two Leicester City fullbacks, um, Luke Thomas and Ricardo Pereira to mark Ruben Diaz, uh, who's playing as a centre back for Manchester City. Okay, let's just uh, wait for the tactic to, to update itself. Okay, so I'm just going to change the mat match setting to 2D Classic so it's a bit easier for uh, for everyone to see the, the movement of the players on the pitch. So Luke Thomas, uh, who is the Leicester City left back, uh, is wearing the number 33 shirt here. Um, Pereira, who is playing as the right fullback, is wearing the number 21 shirt. And Ruben Diaz for of Manchester City is wearing the number 3 shirt. So you should uh, focus on the movements of these three players on the field. So when Leicester City is in possession of the ball, uh, the two Leicester City fullbacks are playing in their regular positions uh, as uh, fullbacks. But as soon as Manchester City takes possession of the ball, you can see these two uh, Leicester City fullbacks running up the pitch towards Ruben Diaz uh, as per the marking instruction that we gave them. Okay, let's try changing the player uh, being marked. So this time I'm going to instruct the, the two Leicester City fullbacks to mark Kevin De Bruyne from Manchester City. Okay, let's uh, wait a while for the tactic to update. And now you can see uh, Luke Thomas and uh, Ricardo Pereira running towards Kevin De Bruyne uh, when Manchester City is, is in possession of the ball. So at this point, I am happy to make the conclusion that uh, this function here, uh, mark, specific, mark specific player, is working as intended. Now let's see what happens when we turn on this uh, Mark Tighter button. So the two Leicester City fullbacks, uh, Luke Thomas and Caro Pereira, are instructed to mark Ruben Diaz, same as before. Uh, and in, in addition to that, I will turn on this uh, Mark Tighter button for both Thomas and Pereira. Now let's just wait for the tactic to update. Okay, so let's just um, observe for a while to see what happens. Okay, so the two Leicester City fullbacks, uh, Thomas and Pereira, they are still marking Ruben Diaz as instructed, 
but I don't notice any significant difference in the way that these players actually behave on the, on the pitch when the mark tighter button is turned on. So what I'll do is I'll uh, show you these two screens side by side. So the screen on the left is when the mark tighter button is turned off and the footage on the right is when the mark tighter button is turned on. So I'll give you guys a moment to compare the two footages. So I want you to, I want you guys to try to compare these two screens uh, side by side and see if you notice any difference in terms of how the two Leicester City fullbacks actually behave on the field when they are um, marking Ruben Diaz. Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but I'm not noticing any difference between these two footages uh, in terms of how um, the, the two Leicester City fullbacks are uh, marking Ruben Diaz. Okay, um, in that case, how about this button here uh, in the tactics screen, uh, use tighter marking. So again, uh, Luke Thomas and Ricardo Pereira are instructed to mark uh, Ruben Diaz. And in the Leicester City tactics screen, I turn on this uh, option, uh, use tighter marking. Again, I have two screens side by side. Uh, so the screen on the left is when the uh, use tighter marking button is turned off. And the screen on the right is when the use tighter marking button is turned on. So again, I'll give you guys a moment to compare the two screens. Okay, again, I'm not noticing any difference between the two screens in terms of how the two uh, Leicester City fullbacks behave on the, uh, on the field. So yeah, I don't think uh, the two Leicester City fullbacks are marking Ruben Diaz any tighter uh, when the used tighter marking button is turned on. So guys, at this stage, um, my conclusion is that the player instruction mark tighter and the tactical instruction use tighter marking are not working as intended, at least according to the uh, experiments that I've shown you here today. Now, uh, let's check out this part here, mark specific position. I'm still using the same uh, Leicester City versus Man City match and I will instruct uh, Luke Thomas and Ricardo Pereira to mark the DC position. Now it's not very clear whether this DC position is from my team's point of view or from the opposition team's point of view, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. So let's just wait for the tactical uh, change to take effect. Okay, so now Man City is in possession of the ball uh, and the two Leicester City fullbacks are staying in their regular playing positions as fullbacks. Um, so they don't seem to be interested in marking the DC position as instructed. Okay, um, in that case, let's try changing the position to be marked. So um, I'll go back into this screen here and um, I'll get the two fullbacks to mark the striker position instead. Okay, so again, both Luke Thomas and Pereira are not deviating from their regular playing positions as fullbacks. Um, okay, in that case, what if I go into the player instructions page and turn on this button, uh, mark tighter for both um, Thomas and Pereira. And also I will go into the screen here and turn on um, use tighter marking for the Leicester City team. Okay, let's see if, if that produces any difference. Yeah, I, I don't think so, guys. So the two Leicester City fullbacks are still not showing any signs of marking the striker position. So guys, unfortunately, um, my conclusion now is that uh, this function, uh, mark specific position, uh, is also not working as intended. Okay, next, let's see if the opposition instruction system works as intended. So we're still in the same Leicester City versus Man City match here, and I will try turning on the tight marking option for Ruben Diaz of Manchester City. Okay, let's wait for the tactical changes to update. Remember, um, Ruben Diaz is wearing the number three shirt, so I want you guys to focus on the movement of the number three shirt uh, on the pitch. Now, do we notice any uh, Leicester City players trying to mark Ruben Diaz? Um, yeah, I don't think so. Um, so when Manchester City is in possession of the ball, none of the Leicester City players are coming anywhere near Ruben Diaz, as you can see. Um, okay, let's try turning on the tactical instruction, use tighter marking, and you know we'll see if that uh, makes any difference. Um, so again, I don't think I'm noticing any difference in, in the way that uh, Leicester City players behave. You can see um, here, uh, Manchester City is in, is in possession of the ball now, and 
there's really no one around Ruben Diaz. None of the Leicester City players are, you know, coming up to uh, mark Ruben Diaz. So guys, the option to tight mark a player under the opposition instructions page in Football Manager is also not working as intended, at least from what I can observe here. So guys, um, out of all the different options available in the game Football Manager related to marking, um, the only one that seems to be working is the option here, mark specific player. Okay, having established that, uh, what I'll do next is to conduct a series of uh, control tests in order to find out more about how the process of marking actually works in the game. So this time, I'm using a friendly match between two Portuguese teams, Benfica and Santa Clara. Again, this match is held at a neutral venue, and I've used the game editor to equalize the attributes and the hidden attributes of the players from both teams. Okay, I'll just show you the uh, tactic for Santa Clara. So this team is using a 4-3-3 tactic, and this guy here in the midfield is playing as a deep lying playmaker. Playmakers in a Football Manager are hard-coded to receive more passes from their teammates, so you can expect that uh, this guy is going to be the focal point um, for the Santa Clara tactic. I'm also going to instruct the uh, Santa Clara team to distribute the ball to the playmaker. So I'm really trying to uh, make this guy take uh, be in possession of the ball uh, in the Santa Clara team as much as possible. Now I'm just going to um, run 10 matches with this setting. Um, so after every match, I go into the match report and um, I record this. I record some statistics for the Santa Clara uh, DLP. Uh, including the number of passes, pass accuracy, uh, running distance, and the match rating. So I guess this set of data from the 10 trial matches, it's going to act as like a, uh, like a baseline uh, control data. Next, I'm going to run further 20 tests with the same setting, except this time uh, I'm making uh, one change. So when the match begins, um, I go into the tactics page for the Benfica team, and I instruct the Benfica striker to go and mark the Santa Clara DLP. Okay, so um, I'll just wait for the tactic to update. So here you can see that whenever the Santa Clara team has the ball, the Benfica striker is going after the Santa Clara DLP as I instructed. So after each of these uh, 20 trials, I record the same set of uh, statistics as before um, for the Santa Clara DLP, including the number of passes, pass accuracy, running distance, and the match rating. Okay, so now uh, let us compare the two sets of data. So I have two Excel tables here. The table on the left is when um, no marking is being done. Um, and the table on the right is when the Santa Clara DLP is being marked by the Benfica striker. So you can see that there is a significant drop in the number of passes for the Santa Clara DLP. You can also observe um, here that the match rating for the Santa Clara DLP is a bit lower when he's being marked by the Benfica striker. So you can really see that uh, when a player is being marked uh, in Football Manager, there is a significant drop in the level of performance, um, especially in the number of passes and the match rating, as we can see uh, from these two Excel tables. Next, what I want to do is to find out the role of the marking attribute, which is one of the technical attributes of the players in uh, Football Manager. According to the in-game in description, the marking attribute plays a part in how effectively a player marks an opponent during a match. Um, so let's try to find out whether um, this is true. So I'm using the same experimental setting as before, using the Benfica versus Santa Clara match. Except this time, I go into the Benfica Strikers uh, page here and I use the game editor to change his marking attribute to 20 out of 20. Uh, then I proceed to the match and I get the Benfica Striker to mark the Santa Clara DLP, same as before. Um, and I repeat this match 10 times. Now, after that, um, I go back to the Benfica Striker page and now I change the marking attribute to uh, 1 out of 20 uh, this time. Then I repeat the same match 10 more times, um, again with the Benfica striker uh, marking the Santa Clara DLP. After each of these trials, I go into the match report and record the same statistics for the Santa Clara DLP, uh, you know, the number of passes, pass accuracy, the running distance, and the match rating. Okay, so I've got the results here um, in these Excel tables. Let's have a look at them together. 
So the table on the left is when no marking is being done. So here, uh, the uh, Santa Clara DLP is roaming around freely without anyone marking him. Um, the next three tables here are when the when the Santa Clara DLP is being marked by the Benfica striker. So out of these three tables, um, this table here is when the uh, the marking attribute for the Benfica striker is 13 out of 20. This table is when the marking attribute is 1 out of 20. And this table is when the marking attribute is uh, 20 out of 20. So I am not seeing any uh, significant difference between the results of these three tables, um, which actually means that the marking attribute of the Benfica striker did not have an effect on the actual quality of the marking. So as long as the Benfica striker is, is instructed to mark the Santa Clara DLP, the same drop in performance is observed for, uh, for the DLP. Uh, regardless of whether the Benfica striker has a marking attribute of 1 or 13 or 20 out of 20. So the fact that the marking attribute doesn't affect the actual quality of the marking in the game is a little bit surprising. But hey, that's Football Manager for you. Um, football Manager will often tell you that something is working. And then um, upon close inspection, it turns out uh, not to be the case. Um, it happens all the time. Anyway, guys, that is it for today's video. Do you agree with today's experiments? What do you think about the marking system in Football Manager? Comment below to let me know. As always, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.